I'm going to start this video by asking you a simple question. And I want you to take time out to answer it. You can pause this video once I ask the question and answer it to yourself. Write it down, whatever you want to do. Answer this question. What makes you who you are? What makes you who you are? Now pause the video, write down your answer, and continue with the rest of the video once you have your answer, okay? Good. You make you who you are. Not your name, not the place you were born in, not the country you were born in, not the situation, the conditions, whatever it is. You make you who you are. Your condition, your family, they shape you, of course. They try to shape you and what they expect you to be. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you and your self-identity. <clears throat> what do I mean? Human beings, like I like to say, we have this biological suit. But we are really spiritual beings. We have a soul. We have things that specifically interest us. Like me, I love working out. I love playing basketball. I love metaphysics. I love motivating people. I love creating content on YouTube. Things like that. Those things are specific to me. You might not want to live the same life that I'm living right now. Because of where I'm born. All those things I am attracted to. Not you. You have those things that your soul yearns for. It might be cooking. It might be cleaning. It might be anything that is specific to you. But you, those things make you who you are. And you fill them deeply within your soul. Now let's go back to the biology of this meat suit. You're a spirit having a physical experience, first of all. And you come into this world as a child, empty of thought. Babies don't even speak English. So most likely they just feel, they feel pain, they feel discomfort, they feel different things, they feel hunger when they're hungry, so they cry. They communicate without words. So even in their thoughts, I don't think they communicate with words. But then they start to listen to the people around them and they take in all of these things from the, their environment, like the words that their parents are saying, the energy, the feeling in their house. If people are angry, the baby's going to feel it. It's going to absorb that by feeling the energy, by noticing, you know, things like that. Then when they get to a certain age, like five years old, where they can talk, walk, and understand people, then they start to download all this information. Then once you're five years old, you're going to school. You start going to school, you start grade one whatever <clears throat> at that point you can read you can write you can consume information with words and english so you came here empty with no self-identity and all these things around you start to shape your self-identity they start to shape your self-identity make you feel like whatever it is oh it might be money the the topic of money around you you learn that from your parents Oh, money's hard to make. Money's hard to find. You have to work hard to get money. You have to chase money. You have to. You consume all this information and guess where it goes? It goes into a part of your mind that is called the subconscious mind, which shapes your paradigm. And a paradigm is pretty much the beliefs and thoughts that you primarily operate on. Things that constantly come back to your, to your conscious mind, the front of your thoughts, right? There's subconscious and there's conscious. So, the subconscious makes suggestions to your conscious mind and your subconscious has been programmed since you were five since you were born basically and you've been consuming all the information from your environment and the people that are around you which has shaped your self-identity and guess what you can change your self-identity like this you can change your self-identity like this it's all about paying attention to the thoughts that you're thinking and the things that you believe. I don't know if you know Rich Dad Poor Dad, but the concept of Rich Dad Poor Dad is by Robert Kiyosaki. And he talks about how a child that grows up in a wealthy home versus a child that grows up in a poor home and the things that they believe in about money. <clears throat> a child that grows up in a poor home has embraced the identity that money is hard to make and in order to make money, you have to exchange your time. And that's the only way to make money. 
So, a rich dad, a child that grows up in a rich home is going to receive the information from wealthy people, which is parents or her parents, that money is easier to make. Money is conscious. You have to consciously use effort or action to make money. So this example is there to just show you that pretty much your results are governed by your the information you've been fed into your subconscious since you were little, since you were a child, since you were small, since you were unborn, right? Well, now that you're grown <clears throat> and you're able to run into videos like this one, you have the power to choose your self-identity. And what I implore you to do, I beg you, give yourself more compassion. Learn how to give yourself more compassion and realize that a lot of the things and the beliefs that you have are not true. They're tr they might be true for somebody else and they don't have to be true for you because you are in control of your self-identity. Like I said in the start of this video, you are the deciding factor about who you are. Nobody else, not me, not your mom, not your dad, you. And trust me, I understand the people around you might be so negative. They might be so disbelieving. They might think small. They might believe their job is the only way to make it out, to make money. They might have all these beliefs that you know and you have seen evidence of that it's not true. But you need to start trusting yourself way more. The clouds look so beautiful, by the way. It looks like I'm in some video game, right? We are in a video game in some sense. Simulation theory, but let's not get into that. Let's focus on the topic. Let's focus on your self-identity. <clears throat> so now from now on from today i want you to use this little exercise and this little practice using frequency you need to understand frequency what is frequency frequency means things are vibrating and your emotions frequency pretty much i don't want to go into complex words i want you to understand it simply your emotions dictate your frequency on a daily basis how do you feel on the inside do you feel motivated do you feel strong do you feel um enthusiastic about life you feel like you're figuring it out you understand or do you feel sad do you feel low do you feel like you're not good enough and guess what controls your frequency your thoughts about yourself so from today onward i want you to start doing this little exercise come closer i want you to start doing this little exercise where every single negative thought that comes into your mind you transform it you flip it into a less negative thought then a less one, then positive, then more positive. Simple. Let me give you a great example. What you need to do is you need to, like for instance, if I think, oh, I go to the gym and I lift weights, then I'm like, oh, everybody's looking at me because I'm fat. That is a common negative thought that a lot of people have, right? Oh, everybody thinks I'm fat. Everybody's looking at me because I'm fat. You have that negative thought. It pops in your head. Okay. Um, at least I'm putting in effort. That is you flipping it to another positive way because you didn't think that thought that thought came from your subconscious mind it pops in your hand to discourage you and bring you back to your frequency that you are used to <laughs> but you need to be able to flip that thought and make it more comfortable and make it more comfortable to you reach a point where it is positive so i am fat oh okay but i know that i can lose some weight that's another positive thought. Oh, I actually showed up to the gym today. That's another positive thought. I know that if I keep showing up to the gym, I will get better results. That is more positive thoughts. Now you're motivated. And see, that's one example. Let's go to another example. You are studying in school and you find a subject hard, right? You find it difficult. Oh, I don't know anything. I don't, I, I'm, I'm so dumb, right? Oh, but um i actually made it this far um i thought i would fail last year but i actually made it through and i passed look how i'm outside sweating for you guys in this hot sun trying to deliver this information so oh you you tell yourself i actually made it this far oh last year i thought i'll fail that subject but i made it so maybe if i put a little more effort i will make it again right then you said oh i don't understand this subject but at least i have tutors available to me oh Last time I didn't understand a subject, I 
I went on YouTube and I finally understood it. So you give yourself compassion. You give yourself compassion and you flip those thoughts from negative to slightly less negative to slightly less negative to slightly less negative then to positive. And that is how you reshape your self-identity into something that is more powerful. So like I say always, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep delivering more and more information that will help you become a, a person that you respect and you, you, you will transcend into your higher self, which is the person that you truly want to become, the person of purpose. I want to help you find your purpose and I want to help you live a great, fulfilling life.